Hello chess fans, Coach Jason here and I want to briefly introduce the Sicilian defense. This is the most popular response to white playing e4 as a first move. The Sicilian is my favorite opening and is favored by world champion Magnus Carlsen as well. In this video we will focus on the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense where black's dark squared bishop will breathe fire down the long diagonal of the center of the board. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so first we're looking at 365chess.com here, and white's already played e4, and as you can see, the most popular move is in fact c5. So white plays c5, and mainline Sicilian, the knight goes to f. So the idea behind c5 is to hopefully trade this side pawn for a central pawn. So the c pawn is not as valuable really as a central pawn like an e or d pawn would be. So black would like to trade that pawn and have a central pawn majority. That's kind of the idea there. So developing the knight, attacking the center of the board, attacking the center of the board, this is a very solid move. And d6 is the main line Sicilian here. And the idea is to keep the pawn on e4 from pushing forward and harassing black's knight later when he wants to come to f6. So when the knight comes f6, you don't want them to play e5. So we play this move d6 in the main line Sicilian. And again, main line Sicilian, we go ahead and push the pawn. Um, White trying to gain space in the center of the board and open lanes for his bishops to get involved. And normally we capture here, the knight captures back. And we develop the knight to f6, attacking that central pawn. And white defends that central pawn. And now we come to the point where the three main lines of the Sicilian diverge. If black plays a6, this is the knight orc variation. This is in fact the most popular variation of the Sicilian, Sicilian defense is this knight orf. And if instead we play g6, it's the second most popular, then we are setting up for the dragon variation. So the bishop would come to g7 next. And the last variation is actually the classical, so if the knight comes to c6, they just call it the Sicilian, but I've always heard it as called the classical variation of the Sicilian. All right, let's go ahead and go over to chess.com now. Take another look at this. So again, e4, c5, the Sicilian, knight f6, d6, the main line, and the exchange of pawns. Knight comes out attacking, knight defends, and now g6. Okay, and so now we're in the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. If we were gonna play the knight or if we would have played a6 and keeping the bishop from getting in there, or this would keep the bishop or the knights from getting to b5 there. Or it, the classical is developed in the night. All excellent moves, but today we're focusing on the dragon variation, and that's so that our bishop can breathe fire down this long, long diagonal, which is just a very strong uh, place for a bishop to be. Okay, so um, again, we're in the main line, and this is leading up to something called the Yugoslav attack, which is. Uh, a, an extremely powerful answer to the Sicilian dragon. There is issue with the dragon position in general because black normally castles and this castle position is somewhat vulnerable because of this earlier move g6. This g6 move can provide kind of a lever for white to open up the, the king's position. So. The Yugoslav attack actually focuses on that, and so this is still mainline Sicilian, but this is the Yugoslav attack, and it leads to an extremely sharp position that can be 
pretty dangerous. You know, if you have kings on opposite sides of the board, normally you're going to start pushing pawns and attacking on the opposite side of the board. You're both going after the king, uh, and uh, there's really no holds barred. You're going to throw everything you got at him because you don't have to worry about your king's safety. You're on the opposite side of the board. Okay, so if you want to avoid the Yugoslav attack, you might play a different move order. Oh, and by the way, on this 365chess.com site, if you look over here, it shows green, gray, and red. So green is the percentage of people that win with white. 33% uh, here draw at the top, and then uh, red is black winning. So kind of give you some perspective. You can kind of play through this on 365chess.com and see, you know, um, find out what are the most popular moves and you know moves that are less used there's usually some sort of issue so it can be a useful it can be a useful um, way to work on your game okay so instead so instead of going in and playing uh, d6 which is the main line we might play something like knight, knight c6 and this is actually what Magnus Carlsen will play just about every time but Magnus Carlsen studies chess all the time and that's what he does and um, his knowledge of the game is obviously extremely extensive and the issue with this knight c6 move can be the Rosalimo um, now I do like playing against Rossellino, I actually play against this quite often and, and that's just fine. But perhaps you want to avoid the Rossellino and you'd like to avoid the Yugoslav attack. There's actually another variation we can play, which is actually the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. We can actually play instead, we could play G6 which they're calling the Hungarian variation here on chess.com. They call it the Hyper Accelerated Jack Dragon. But if we play G6 now, we have opportunity to save tempo and perhaps take advantage of a player that might go for the Yugoslav attack. Again, we're gonna play the Hyper Accelerated Dragon instead here. We play the hyper accelerated. We're going to play the hyper accelerated dragon instead here, to try to take advantage of a player that often plays the Yugoslav attack. So, if you know somebody that plays the Yugoslav attack against you and you'd like to get around this, this might be an option for you. So, we play g6 early, and if play continues. Now, actually, playing this move, knight c6, transposes us back to just an accelerated dragon rather than hyper-accelerated, but this tends to be a bit stronger than, uh, than jumping the bishop to g7 right away. Okay, so now we have our bishop breathing fire down that long diagonal once again. And this is a mainline move in the regular dragon. But, so black has an extra tempo here though, because he never played that move d6. We haven't played this move d6, which normally about this point in the variation, black ends up playing d5, moving their pawn a second time, but we don't have that happening here. Now we can play d5, and we're in a better position being up a, a tempo. Let me compare this to our other game here briefly. So, so we basically we're, we're at almost the same position in the game, but the variation on the left, we played the, the regular opening with d6 as a second move, and notice that in both positions here, it's white to move. So everything's basically the same, except for white hasn't castled in the position on the right. So white is down a tempo. And this is going to make for a more interesting variation, especially from black's perspective. 
And so play may continue with captures and knight captures. Knight captures back, queen comes up, and and this just ends up being a much more comfortable variation for for black. If if white continues with castle's queen side, then then there's open files for rooks to jump on here. The bishop can jump into the action, and this will be a lot more enjoyable. Okay, and this is actually the strongest move as suggested by the engine on chess.com. Just gonna play it through, and there's a tactic here I want to show you. And this is also the strongest move, just unleashing the bishop and setting up for either rook to come to d1. So, you know, in this position, the queen here is in some trouble. So perhaps you might want to move, but if you can't move that direction because we've got this bishop here and you really don't want to move here because then you're blocking in your own bishop. So you may move here and this is this is actually a big mistake that hopefully you um, would not make um, and we really need to consider um, three things when we're looking at this position here and we can identify attack if you think about these three things above here then you should uncover that attack just go ahead and pause your video and think about it as you like Okay, so we always want to consider checking moves. So bishop takes c3 is a checking move that hopefully you considered. And then you know how do you you know what happens? Captures back and now queen captures, forking the king and rook. And this is just a huge mess. Completely one position for black because well. Black's king is pretty darn safe, and White's king never will really be, be safe. Not to mention, um, White will lose that rook. These rooks can jump into the game and make life really bad, really quickly, for White. All right. So this concludes our look into the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. Please let me know if you'd like me to cover other chess openings in my videos. Don't forget to check out our weekly live stream on YouTube this week on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's GMT minus four. If you found this video useful, please subscribe, hit that like button, and share it with others. Thank you very much for watching and have a great week.